Uh, next, science naman tayo. Of the following organisms, which are included under kingdom, plantae. Okay. Rato A, you have fungi. Kasi sinabi natin yung fungi, sila yung mga organisms that feeds on necrotic and decaying matter. Sila yung mga decomposers natin in the ecosystem. O, letter B, you have your magnolidae. Ang magnolidae naman ay evergreens. Sila yung mga plants na hindi agad-agad nahuhulog yung mga dahon. O, letter C, you have prokaryotes. Ang prokaryotes, organisms without membrane-bounded nucleus. So, therefore, sila yung inyong mga bacteria. Ang letter D is protozoa. Sila naman ay nasa kingdom protista. Ang protista, nagpo-protesta dahil magulo ang kanilang classification. Parang plants pero hindi. Parang fungi pero hindi. Parang animals pero hindi. Parang kayo pero hindi. Sila ang nasa kingdom protista. O, naintindihan. So, ang tinatanong sa inyo, ano ang included under kingdom plantae? So, ang fungi ba ay plants? Hindi. Ayun, magnolidae. Yes, kasi diba sa inyo kanina, they are evergreens and they are examples of plants. The answer is that are being magnolidae. Ayan. Next one, o, yan yun yung magnolidae. Ang napakaganda, o. Which organism is classified under kingdom fungi na naman? Ano ba kasi yung kingdom fungi? Ano nga sila mga decomposers? So, they feed on necrotic and decaying matter. Okay? So, ayan. Red algae. Ang red algae, they are classified under kingdom protista. Para kasi silang plants, pero hindi. Okay? Letter B, we have the word microsporidia. Ang microsporidia, actually, uh, isa din siya sa halimbawa ng inyong fungi. Di ba ang mga fungi, they reproduce through spores? Okay? So, yung microsporidia, para silang ano, ang pinaka-structure ng spores niya na hindi pa nagmamature, okay? Uh, next one, you have your diatoms. Ang diatoms naman ay yung responsible for the shine, shimmering, glittering doon sa tubig dagat kapag gabi. Di ba pag gabi, nag-glitter uh, yung, ano, yung tabing dagat, lalo pa nakipaglaplapan kayo doon. Di ba nakapansin nyo yung tubig doon ay nag-shine? So, ang responsible dyan is yung inyong mga diatoms, okay? Kasi capable sila ng bioluminescence. They glow in the dark. Ay, syempre, streptococcus. Lagi yung naririnig yan. Bacteria yan. Okay? So, the answer is letter B. Microsporidia. Hmm. Yan. Yeah, Nagsura na yung microsporidia. Hmm. Now, I classify the following organisms. Okay? Hmm. Yes. Okay. Nara. Pente. Protozoan. Protista. Mushroom, fungi, mosquito, plante, carrot, animalia, next, staphylococcus, monera. Monera yung mga bakteriya ha. Okay, microsporidia, fungi, algae, protista, parang plants pero hindi. Okay, so, maging familiar kayo dun guys sa mga organisms na yon Sila yung mga binigay na before sa board exam. And then you just classify them to what kingdom they are, okay? Uh, next, which of the following is an example of a useful function for bacteria? So, pag sinabi kasi natin yung bacteria, ang dating sa atin negative agad. So, pero actually, <coughs> 5% lang ng bacteria ang pathogenic. So, 95% are beneficial to man. Okay? So, ano na dito ang halimbawa sa usual function ng bacteria? Okay? So, the answer is letter ano. O, sinabi mo letter D, maybe pathogenic and cause human disease. Siyempre, pa nag-cause na human disease, hindi yun beneficial, di ba? O, mali agad yun. Letter C, can synthesize new form of heavy metals. Oh, yung bongga, nakagawa ng mga metals. Okay? Letter C, maybe use as vectors to introduce proteins. Okay? Or letter D, can clean up an oil spill by digesting hydrocarbons. Okay? Ang pwede niyong pagpilian is letter A and letter B. Okay? Pero saan talaga dyan yung pinakamalaki yung impact? Okay? So that is letter C. Eh, can clean up ang oil spill by digesting hydrocarbons. At tawag kasi natin sa process na yan ay bioremediation. Bioremediation is cleaning up human waste with the use of microorganisms metabolism. Halimbawa, nagkaroon ng oil spill, maglalagay na sila doon ng oil-eating microbes and then ipapakain nila sa bacteria yung mga bonds within the, uh, the hydrogen bonds between the petroleum and then eventually mawawala yung mga petroleum or yung oil doon sa bodies of water. Anong ulit ang tawag doon? Bioremediation. Oh, next one. Oh, yan yung bioremediation. Next, explain ko lang. 
Uh, which protest can cause dysentery? Dysentery, yan yung mayroon kang dugo sa iyong tae. Okay, there is blood in your stool. Oh, letter A, subject, gorilla berenche. So, pwede kayo nalang sabihin na kaya ka nagkaroon ng dysentery dahil may gorilla doon sa iyong channel. Oh, Siyempre, hindi yun ang tama sagot, di ba? Gorilla berenche is simply your gorilla, yung monkey, ba? Hmm, monkey. Okay, letter B, you have your plasmodium vivax. Okay, take note of plasmodium vivax. Lumalabas yun sa board. Plasmodium vivax is responsible for your malaria. Pag tinanong kayo, what causes malaria? Don't answer. Mosquito. Ang mosquito ay carrier. Okay? Pero ang talagang nag-cause ng malaria is your plasmodium vivax. So, minsan, walang word na vivax. Ang sagot nyo ay plasmodium. Or minsan, ang tanong ay protest. Okay? Basta ang sagot dyan ay either nag-cause ng malaria, it's plasmodium vivax, plasmodium, or protest. O, streptococcus, Siyempre, bakterya yan. Okay, di ba nga lagi nyo yung naririnig? Bakterya, hindi naman siya protest. And letter D, it's amoeba histolytica. Okay? So, yan lang naman yung wala tayong nakita ka pintasa. No? The answer is, it's amoeba histolytica. Kaya hindi nyo naintindihan kung ano talaga yan. Okay? It's amoeba, yung from the word amoeba, o. Oh, amoeba. So, meaning, halimbawa siya na protest. So, yan are responsible for your dysentery. Ano yan, yan na yung may dysentery o may blood and mucus of feces. The waste product of photosynthesis is, okay, so ngayon, aralin natin yung inyong photosynthesis. Ano ba ang kailangan natin para magkaroon ng photosynthesis? Of course, number one, you need the energy from sunlight. We have your photon, okay, and then you have your carbon dioxide and water. Anong kailangan natin? Sunlight. Carbon dioxide and water. Wait lang, parang mali yung pasunod ko ng kamay ko. Ano. Basta, basta yun yun. O kailangan ninyo ng sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. And then, ang magiging product natin is your glucose unit. Okay, glucose sugar. So that is a C6H12O6. And aside from that, may nabubuo din tayo na oxygen gas. So since wala namang glucose sa option, ano pang pwede yung sagot? You have your oxygen. So ulitin ko, ano ang inputs natin for photosynthesis? You have your light, okay, sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. At ang kanilang naging product ay glucose or the sugar and your oxygen. So therefore, the correct answer is oxygen. Okay. Ah, ayan pala. O, oh, di mas maganda. Nakita nyo na yung ano. Uh, o, oh, yan. Di ba sabi yan? Glucose plus oxygen. Ayan. Carbon dioxide and water. Ayan ang tinatawag na cellular respiration. Yan, ito yun. Si glucose at oxygen, product siya ni photosynthesis. Ang nangyayari, break down niya si glucose. Okay? Into carbon dioxide and water. So, ang kabaligtaran ni photosynthesis, ang tawag dyan ay cellular respiration. Ang cellular respiration, ginamit niya ang product ni photosynthesis para mag-provide sa atin ng source of energy or your ATP, the energy currency of cell. And then we have here sunlight plus carbon dioxide. Actually, may plus water pa dyan. Mag-yield siya ng glucose and oxygen. Okay, mag-yield siya ng glucose and oxygen. So, that is the process of photosynthesis. Kaya kanina, ang sagot natin ay oxygen. Okay, practice tayo. Sabihin nyo lang sa akin kung photosynthesis siya or cellular respiration. Food making in plants. Ano daw? Photosynthesis. Animals do to survive. Cellular respiration. And product is glucose. Okay, photosynthesis. And product is oxygen. Photosynthesis. And product is carbon dioxide. Cellular respiration. And end product is water. Cellular respiration. Okay. O, ito na tandaan ninyo. Photo, go. Anong photo, go? Photo is photosynthesis. Ang go is glucose, oxygen. Ang kanyang product is glucose and oxygen. And then, cell you, cell, as in cellular respiration, cell you, CW. Cell you, CW. Anong CW? Carbon dioxide and Water. So, photo, go, sell, you see, W. Nakaintindihan? Okay. Uh, next one. Okay. So, number 26. What organism would most likely be in an arctic environment? O, ayan. Nakita nyo na yung ano. Nakakita na kayo ng ano. 
ng crocodile, di ba? Nakita na kayo ng Maya bird, nakita kayo ng turtle. O, syempre, oo. Kasi hindi naman tayo sa Arctic environment. Kasi nabi yung Arctic environment, yung mga nag-yelo ng mga surrounding. So, therefore, ano sagot nyo? Yung walrus. Kasi yan lang yung hindi nyo nakita, di ba? Ayan yung walrus, o. Oh, ayan. Di ba? Ang cute-cute niya. Mayroon siyang dalawang ngipin sa ano. Sa unahan, o. Oh. Tingnan yung katabi nyo, medyo hawig, di ba? O, oh, walrus yan, okay? Ang walrus, tandaan nyo ha, makikita sa Arctic environment, sa mga may yellow-yellow, gano'n. Ay, o, oh, ayan. Araling natin yung, yung taxonomy. O, yun, nakikita nyo dyan na ano, na ulo, na walang mata. Sino yan? Si Aristotle. Siya talaga ang unang nag-classify ng organisms. Ang uh, classification nila nung una is dalawa. Animalia and Digitabilia. Pero syempre, di ba, late yan, ang dami na lang ang ating ano, kingdoms, okay? So, ang sa ngayon, ang ginagamit natin na uh, classification scheme is that of Carlos Linnaeus or Carl Linnaeus. So, siya ang nag-introduce ng binomial nomenclature or yung two names na binibigay sa mga organisms or simply your scientific name. So, he was able to name 11,000 species of plants and animals. Kaya siya tinatawag natin na father of taxonomy. That is, Cardinae or Carolus Linnaeus. Okay. Paano natin ginagawa yung scientific naming? Okay, ganito yun. So, we have the genus. The first word is the genus. And the second word or the second name is your espeche. Okay. Ang tawag dyan ay binomial nomenclature. Bakit binomial? Because two names. Okay. At for our convenience, ang ginamit is Latin language because Latin language is a dead language. So meaning, yung mga words nila noon hanggang ngayon, pareho pa rin yung meaning, hindi siya nagiging obsolete. Di ba yung English, after some time, may mga words na hindi na natin ginagamit. Pero sa Latin, kung ano yung words nila noon, ganun pa rin hanggang ngayon. And at the same time, so... Siya kasi yung ginagamit ang karamihan noon, lalo ng mga educated ng mga ano natin, ng mga scientists, okay, ng mga philosophers. So, kaya ang ginamit na nila para makaintindihan is Latin language, okay? So, for example, we have here your man, okay? Ang kanyang genus ay homo, at ang kanyang espesye ay homo sapiens, okay? So, ang kanyang scientific name, kinuha natin ang genus niya, at ang kanyang espesye is homo sapiens, that is your man, o. Oh, ayan naman yung... Uh, Dolphy o Thorachops, okay? So, ang kanyang uh, species spe 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 naman ay Thorachops, Troncratus. So, ang kanyang scientific name ay Thorachops, Troncratus. So, that is the battle-nosed dolphin. Now, let's study your eight divisions in taxonomy. Okay, di ba meron kayo dyang, ano, mnemonics dapat? So, that is your domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and espesye. O, kaya nyo bang i-memorize yun agad-agad? O, di ba? Hindi. O, ganito muna i-memorize nyo. Dream, ko, pumasa, cause, or, family, gets, sweldo. Kaya nga ulit, anong dream ninyo? Dream, ko, pumasa, cause, or, family, gets, sweldo. Okay, memorize. Oh, ano mas madaling i-memorize? Yung dream ko po masakos or family gets swell do or yung domain kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, espesye. O oh, di ba mas madaling i-memorize yung dream ko po masakos or family gets swell do. So, ganun lang yung gawin nyo. I-memorize yung mnemonics na yan and then pati nanong kayo sa board exam. If domain is at the top, what is at the bottom? So, i-recite nyo lang ulit. Dream ko po masakos or family gets swell do and then palitan nyo lang siya. Okay? So, if domain is at the top, ang nasa bottom ay is fish shape. So, ganun siya ginagamit. Okay, now, we have here your picture ng dolphin. No? Ayan. Ayan. We have here the tree of life. Ay, yung mga picture of dolphin, hayaan nyo na yan. Sinipak lang kami maghanap ng mga isda. Okay? So, we have here the tree of life. Okay? So, we have here your eukarya, archaea, and bacteria. Okay? Ano meron sa kanila? Tatlo. Sila ang inyong three domains. Okay? Ang tatlong domain ninyo ay Bacteria, Archaea, and Eukarya. That is your bay. Okay? Ang tatlong domain natin ni bay. And then for your kingdoms, meron tayong lima. We have Kingdom Plantae, Kingdom Animalia, Kingdom Fungi, Kingdom Protesta, and Kingdom Monera. Okay? So yun nandyan is your five kingdoms. Anong ulit yun? You have Plantae, Animalia, Fungi, Protesta, and Monera. And syempre, meron tayong virus. Ano ba ang virus? Puti na nung kayo sa board exam. Is virus a living thing? You answer, no. Okay? Virus is just a protein with a genetic material. So, virus is a 
non-living thing outside the body but once inside the body of a host cell it becomes a living thing kasi inaagaw niya ang machinery ng ating healthy cell so ito'y tandaan nyo yung virus okay yung virus outside the body it is a non-living thing but inside the body okay it becomes a living thing virus is not composed of cells so hindi siya uh, siya ay tinatawag natin as cellular kasi sinabi a cellular not composed of cells so wala siyang buhay okay so that's your virus the next one Actually, the following process involves chloroplast. Ano ba ang chloroplast? Ang chloroplast ay makikita natin niya sa, usually sa mga, actually, doon lang natin siya makikita sa mga plants. Okay? Ang chloroplast ay makikita natin sa plants and it contains chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is the pigment that captures the energy from sunlight that we need for the process of photosynthesis. Okay? So, therefore, ano daw dito sa mga sumusunod na process ang involves si chloroplast? The answer is letter a. Conversion of light energy to chemical energy. At anong tawag natin sa conversion of light energy to chemical energy? That is your photosynthesis. Okay, number 28. A hypothetical ecosystem contains lettuce, a caterpillar, a small pasturing bird, and a lion. A gardener arrives and sprays pesticide, killing all the caterpillars. What can happen to the ecosystem? Letter A, the passerine birds will thrive. Letter B, the passerine birds will convert to herbivores. Letter C, the lions will eventually die. And letter D, the lettuce will wilt and die. Okay, pwede man natin sabihin na ganito yung nangyari. Yung caterpillar, ah, sorry, yung lettuce, kinakain ni caterpillar. Si caterpillar kinakain ni bird, at si bird kinakain ni lion. Nung dumating yung gardener, pinatay niya si caterpillar. So, pwede ba sabihin na the passerine bird will thrive? Mabubuhay doon ang bird? Oh, Siyempre, hindi. Okay, mamamatay siya. So, sabi doon sabi, the passerine bird will convert to herbivores. Pwede ba siyang masabi na, ay, wala ng caterpillar, lettuce na na yung kainin ko, vegetarian na ako. Pwede ba yun? O, syempre, hindi. Letter D, sabi doon, the lettuce will wilt and die. Mamamatay ba ang lettuce? Actually, mas lalo siyang lalaki. Siya yung pinaka magbe-benefit sa lahat. Kasi wala na nang kumakain sa kanya. So, the correct answer is letter C. The lions will eventually die. So, bakit namatay si lion? Dahil namatay si caterpillar. Pag namatay si caterpillar, mamamatay si bird. Pag namatay si bird, mamamatay si lion. Anong kinamatay nilang lahat? Malnutrition o gutom. Okay? So, the answer is letter C. The lions will eventually die. Okay? So, ayan yung nangyari o. So, si lettuce, okay, tapos kinain ni caterpillar, si bird, ayan si lion, dumating ang gardener, pinatay, o, ayan. So, anong nangyari? Namatay si lion. Okay, next one. This demonstrated the feeding connections between all life forms, okay. Kasi sinabi naman natin, um, feeding connections, okay, that is your food web. Ano ba kasi ang food web? Yun ito yun. May food chain tayo. Food chain is the series of eating events. Tulad na example natin kanina na si lettuce, kinain ni caterpillar, so, caterpillar, kinain ni bird, si bird kinain ni lion. So, yan ang dinatawag na food chain because it is a series of eating events. Okay? Pero pa yung mga food chain na yan, nag-interconnect, nag-overlap. Okay? So, ang tawag natin dyan ay food web. Okay? Anong tawag doon? food web. So, the answer is food web. Oh, this is an example about terrestrial food web. So, nakita ninyo, hindi lang yung isang food chain yung nandyan, kundi marami. Okay? Next. Predation is a relationship exemplified by. Okay, ganito yun. Pag sinabi natin predation, ang involved dito is a predator and the prey. Predator, yan yung nangain. Siya ang malaking organism. Yung prey, siya naman yung kinain. Siya yung maliit na organism. Bakit siya tinawag na prey? Siya ang laging nagpipray na Lord sana wag akong kainin. Okay? So, yung prey, yun yung maliit. Yung predator, yun yung malaki. Ang tawag nila ay predation. Now, identify natin kung anong relationship ang nag-e-exist dito sa ating mga options. Simula tayo sa letter D. Letter D, a clownfish living within a sea anemone. So, sa clownfish na sea anemone, ang nangyari, si clownfish, siya ang nagpo-provide ng shelter, okay? Ay, sorry, siya ang nagpo-provide ng food. Kapag kumain siya ng food, yung mga particles niya nahuhulog. So, napupunta yung kanyang food particles doon kay sea anemone. At sea anemone naman, siya ang nagpo-provide ng shelter para doon sa clownfish. Ang problema, hindi nyo alam anong sea anemone. Alam nyo yung sa finding Nemo and finding Dory, yung gumagalaw-galaw doon 
ganun, ganun, ganun. Oh, that is the sea anemone. So, since nag-benefit sila sa isa't isa, anong relasyon mayroon sila? Ang tawag doon ay mutualism. Both organism benefits from each other. Mutualism. Letter C, a tapeworm living in the gastrointestinal tract of a toddler. So, pag sinabi natin mga tapeworm, okay, so ang tendency niya, nag-benefit sila mula doon sa host, pero yung host niya ay na-harm. So, anong tawag sa relationship? One organism benefits, that is the uh, your parasite, okay? And one organism is harmed, that, that is your host. Ang tawag doon ay parasitism. So, hindi pwede yung letter C. Letter B, a hunter shooting a duck in the forest and having it for dinner. So, si hunter, shinot niya yung duck. Ang tawag sa kanya ay predator, okay? At si duck naman, siya yung kinain. Ang tawag sa kanya ay prey. So, anong relationship nila? That is your predation, okay? And letter A, an orchid attached to the trunk of a narrow tree. Si orchid, so, nagkaroon siya ng shelter dahil doon kay Nara Tree. Pero si Nara Tree, wala namang nangyari sa kanya nung nagkaroon ng orchid. Hindi siya nasaktan, hindi din siya nag-benefit. So, yung tawag natin sa relationship na one organism's benefit and the other organism uh, is unaffected, ang tawag doon ay commensalism. So, therefore, saan dyan ang example ng inyong predation? The answer is letter B. A hunter shooting a duck in the forest and having it for dinner. Ayan yung mga ulit ang relasyon. Okay. Tingnan niyo to. Yan yung tinatawag na sea anemone at clownfish. Yung isa ay nag-benefit, ang isa ay nag-benefit din. Anong tawag? Mutualism. Okay? Next one. Oh, yan naman yung uh, tapeworm. It's not actually a tapeworm. Sige, tapeworm pala yan. Sa kanyang intestinal tract. So, ang isa ay nag-benefit, ang isa naman ay no-harm. Ang tawag ay parasitism. Okay, so that is a tree and a bird. Okay, so si tree, nagkaroon siya ng ano? ng puga doon, okay? Si, I'm sorry. Si, ano pala? Si Bird, nagkaroon siya ng bahay doon sa tree, okay? Pero, yung magkakaroon niya ng bahay doon sa tree, hindi naman nagkaroon ng effect kay tree. Yun nga lang, nag-benefit si Bird, nagkaroon siya ng shelter. So, ang isa ay nag-benefit, yung isa naman ay unaffected, that is your common salism, okay? Pero in this case, yung tiger, kinakain niya yung um, buwaya. So, ang tawag dyan ay predation, Okay? And eto naman, pareho silang tiger, okay? So, pareho silang ng gusto, pareho silang ng kailangan, pareho silang ng pagkain, pareho silang ng papel na ginagampanan. Ang kanilang magiging relasyon ay competition, okay? So, those are the types of your relationships.